Yeah, it's incredible. A match, a pretty fantastic performance to come back. 42 points down mm. at half time. They tell me the speech at half time was. was one of the all time greats. What was the subject matter? How did you approach getting your team back? Oh, I think that I can't actually remember it all, really. Um, I suppose when you look at it, uh, seven goals down, you just got to really put some sort of plan up there to give an opportunity to be there three quarter time. And um, I'd say that's what I would have been looking for. Came Sheets, from the Sheets, I was just going to say, you, would you say after that speech, you, you moved everybody around the second quarter to try and get a lift, which you didn't get. You almost put them back in the same position as the third quarter. Is that sort of, after that speech, you said, well, look, fellas, it starts again. It's yes, up to you. Yes, well, I think, Tom, that's, that's about the only way you can approach it, really. I mean, probably the last goal that uh, Adelaide got when the ball went over James Hurd's head. I thought to myself, geez, we can't even get a bloke back there that can, <laughs> can time it and read it by, by himself, you know. And he's just about tripped over his own bootlace in the time. But... Um, that goal was a pretty telling goal, and I thought, well, you know, when you're walking across the ground, you've got to, you just got to keep yourself positive because you've got to, you've yeah. got to be that way with your own players. And of course, I mean, now the other, the other real good thing about the game, uh, from our point of view, is that we, you know, we played last Sunday, and uh, we had one day's less rest. You know. Did you have a concern about young Dustin Fletcher on Modra in the first half? Um, I thought that Dustin uh, wasn't playing up to the, these performances uh, that have been, but I thought he really handled it. Um, very very well I mean we left him there uh, and we just went with him and, and, and just sent Brian Wood out there and said look you know you're the boy you're the one we've gone with all year and then this is the time to show it and he, he really did not in the second half. Look, Kevin you did show a lot of faith in in the boys Sam how did you see the game pan out did you see a turning point after half time any specific incident? Well I thought to be uh, quite honest uh, Somerville at least started to compete with Wren in the ruck and gave long and uh, um, uh, yeah, we Denham. No, Denham. Yeah. Denham, <coughs> some opportunities uh, out of the uh, centre. <coughs> it was like the young bull and the old bull. Adelaide, the young bull, they rushed into the game and almost were a spent force at half time. I must say, I didn't think Essendon uh, had it in them to come back, but we've uh, underestimated Essendon several times this year and they've proved us wrong every time. And this was the greatest revival. Well, it's the greatest revival since. Jimmy Swaggered cornered Tammy again for the 15th time. It was, it was sensational. Uh, and uh, full credit to uh, the man here on my right and uh, to all his players. It was a marvellous performance. And I tell you what, Carlton will be, we won't preempt uh, what's going to happen next week, but Carlton will be hard pressed to uh, beat this side. And I know they'll be in one hell of a fight if they do. And you have to put that in perspective what happened. A 42 point turnaround, people say in modern day football can happen and you know in home and away games quite easily this was a pressurized final uh, it's all there to be won I mean which makes the Let's, we're going to put that one in there Mark absolutely too. sensation this one's going to we have to put that near uh, Sam here, I, I think thought that, that uh, it, in the finish at, after half time it was the survival of the fittest with both sides. Fittest, Ted. The fittest. <laughs> the fittest. There was, there what were your no thoughts injury. on that? Was no. an injured well, what were your thoughts on well, that? Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Essendon appeared Fitter to... Side. Appeared. They didn't do this uh, by design, but they paced themselves because, really, I've never seen a side like Adelaide come out and just play with such blistering pace and very powerhouse stuff it was. And Essendon were reeling. They hung on. They just uh, grafted a couple of goals. They had exactly double the deficit at halftime, 6-6 to 12-12. It was a real hiding. And and, uh, I, I know what about this goal, Sam? This is a very important well, goal. Well, that would have put them goal. 17 points up. Sorry, missed goal. Very would have point, goal. That was an absolutely vital miss. That would have put them 17 points up. I think it was the 22nd, yeah. 26-minute mark of the uh, last Mick third Mark. quarter. Let's get this right. The 26-minute mark of the <laughs> uh, third quarter. And that would have given them some real breathing space. But look, just full credit to Essendon for a marvellous performance. In the world of golf... Yes. Uh, there's a cliche there, he choked. Did Adelaide choke in the last quarter? Well, look, uh, I, I wouldn't... Uh, now, this will stand someone look, watching over the border, but I wouldn't take anything away from Adelaide. I thought they were terrific yesterday, and you'd be taking a hell of a lot away from Essendon if you said that they choked because they just kept keeping on, keeping on, Essendon, and they just prevailed and can, persisted, and eventually they staggered in uh, to win by... Uh, 11 points. It was a marvellous yeah. performance well, by both sides. Concords, to be have, Concords have done anything in the last quarter to stop the bombers' onslaught. Thing, Ted. Uh, no, not really. I, I, I think his side uh, were out of legs, to be honest. They, uh, fittest. Yes, they were out of legs. Uh, they hung on. Hawthorne had the chance to do that to um, uh, the Crows a couple of weeks ago and uh, weren't capable of doing it. And Essendon, who uh, 
uh, probably a notch above Hawthorne at this stage, we're, uh, we're, we're capable of I'd going like on with it. I'd like to pose a question now while we're on that to Shudes. You've been in quite a few grand finals now and you know the danger of playing your fourth final, how tired teams get after half time in your fourth final. What sort of training is the team going to receive this week? I'd, I'd say we'd have a light week. I think we started our, our preparation for this week's game, uh, finishing the game yesterday. Uh, I think the, our first training on really in the end had to be yesterday. So what will be your hardest night, Tuesday oh, as normal? 45 minutes on a Tuesday night. 45 to minutes. Yeah, I would think that. I mean, we, so we, we look at, um, don't forget we had a bye three weeks ago. Yep. Could and you? That, that's going to be probably... Stand a, in your face. Well, in 1990, having the, the draw, and yep. um, which really cost us dearly, uh, I felt that um, with the two weeks off in the month, this time we're coming through another, another way. We're three hard hit outs, getting players back just after missing a week or two like Mercedes and um, Fletcher and these boys and, and um, Mark Thompson come back and played very well I thought yesterday. Do you think that'll work in somebody's favour like Harvey if, if he makes it back? Well oh, he's going to make it back isn't he? Yeah. And who will miss out? I'm not sure yet. Well, give us a couple of names. I'll give you no names. Did you give an ultimatum <laughs> to... They don't deserve a name. Hey Sheets. Why not? You're not the only person that said that either Kevin. <laughs> Sheets, Sheets, did you give an ultimatum to kick it at training on Thursday as we read in the paper? Oh, no, actually, I spoke to um, the press about Derek. They, they asked me about Derek's form, and Derek uh, he had been unlucky. He's been on and off the bench, and really more than any, probably any player at Essendon suffered uh, of the development of a group of young players coming through. I mean, you can't develop younger players if they're on the bench. You've got to have them out in the deck. You used the press. And, um, no, I didn't use the press. I spoke to Derek. I mean, I'd like you used the press to get your message indirectly across to Derek. Lift. No, I spoke to Derek myself. Lift. Kevin, this morning, um, yeah, how the how the boys shaped up? We had a two-hour session this morning uh, from nine o'clock to eleven, oh. and uh, we went through. Um, we've gone through a hell of a lot this morning to to really organise uh, what we're on about this week. I mean, there's a lot of uh, distractions in Grand Final week that everybody expects um, people to uh, attend and have and so forth. We've got a lot of young players that uh, we want to make sure they handle the week and. After that, we had a session with um, our other boys, uh, our senior players, on um, make, making sure that they handle it correctly too. Do you, do you think a tactical error Adelaide made was at three-quarter time when they sat down? Did that inspire the boys? Did you make point of the fact that they looked flagged? Well, I think they sit down flagged. in Adelaide. Flagged. Quite flagged. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Kevin. Thanks for, you thanks for contributing. Yeah. Right? So, motoring. <laughs> flag motoring. No, well, it? did you? No. Well, uh, look. We, we were standing up, we were prepared to get out and get into the next quarter quickly, we were yeah. behind still and uh, I mean once again we are just trying to be positive in every year we could because that's Kevin, all they're going for us. Kevin, you got any new videos to show the boys this week or what? Uh, what's on the we agenda had, for the videos? We, we saw three this morning Lou. What three. sort? What, movies Football or? all videos Lou, not like Sam's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> on that note Kev, stay with us because next up we're joined by one of your real generals on the field. This is the performance yesterday. It must have been like a, a bolt of electricity going through you when you kicked that goal in the last quarter to take the lead. Yeah, certainly, Max. Uh, I'd never kicked a goal in the final before, so I was looking for one, and, uh, you know, uh, they don't come around too often. Now, G Gary, did the uh, the great man bring a tear to your eye at uh, <laughs> half-time? <laughs> I mean, what, just <laughs> tell us, how did the half-time oration go? Apparently it's uh, almost legend now oh. that he uh, absolutely spruiked <laughs> his heart out. Yeah, a little bit overstated, I think. You know, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> three or four... Time out the game was rather boring. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say? Come on. I oh, just, you know, uh, remain positive and uh, you know, all? try and turn the game around and uh, chip away at it. And, um, a couple of old cliches, that's all it was. Yep, yeah. exact, exactly. And, you know, four or five... <laughs> Can't think of right. anything got, originally. Got down hill here. Four or five of the older blokes uh, did a bit of the talking too, just to Anyone keep the younger weep? guys focused. Anyone weep at all? <coughs> I didn't detect it, what but, you, you know... You know. <laughs> now, Gary, I, uh, I said before that Essendon looked the fittest side of the finish. You personally, yourself, looked to be cramping up, were you? Uh, a little bit. Ted, towards the end, yeah, I think the ground was fairly hard. And I, I was amazed, actually, with all the rain we had Wednesday or midweek, uh, the ground came up very hard. So, uh, you know, but I'd prefer it that way rather than, you know, play all year and then play in the bog, you know. So, you know, they've done the right thing, keeping Gary, the ground. Coming into the finals, the Crows had won one game, the first game of the year in Melbourne, lost every other Melbourne-based game and then they beat Hawthorne, but did you expect them to be as good as they were? Because they've run the two grand finalists, two really hard games, and they've beaten another finalist, so they were they really did improve in the finals, they were quite good. Oh, do you? No doubt, no doubt. They you know, had five 
players in the All Australian side. Um, <laughs> oh, had uh, oh, a, oh. a very good last couple Don't of weeks. Um, you know, really focused. Uh, so they, you believe they they're deserved, worthy of they the third oh, place they received? Certainly, yep. they. Uh, you know, they just put it together at the right end of the yep. season, and that's all you have to do. Kevin, mm -hmm. could I talk about two players, Darren Buick? Uh, He's <coughs> taken on a little more responsibility this year by design. Both you and him had that chat. And, uh, and Tim Watson, I mean, the work that he does on the ground in leadership is fantastic. But the work that he does away from the ground too in the dressing room and at practice must be an enormous benefit to you. In Watson's case or Buick's? Uh, no, in Watson's case, Watson's but Buick, case. Well, uh, I mean, he's moved up another level, hasn't he? Well, probably so. Oh, he has. There's no doubt about that. He's been a terrific... <laughs> I think that probably, um, I mean, he'd be looking for a good final next week. Uh, he didn't play very well in, in 1990, along with a few of us, in regarding our performances. On, uh, uh, and we're looking at 1990 as a benchmark because we let ourselves down and our supporters. And I'd say that Tim, um, well, with Tim coming back into the game, I mean, he kicked the first goal yesterday and probably, I think, the last, wasn't it? Yeah, the last, um, um, Kevin. And I think he's probably been one of the recruits of the year. Yeah. Gary, could I ask you, uh, <coughs> did you, did you perceive a changing point in the game um, from either side's point of view? No, not really. I think uh, we were just lucky enough to kick the goals, the important goals in the third quarter without a miss, I suppose, and uh, got the momentum going yeah. and uh, you know, carried on from there. Kevin, the, um, your assessment, two-part question of James Hurd's game yesterday, and he is a vital link for you. Do you think in that grand final, it wasn't, didn't seem to be a lot of movement in that half forward line in the first half? Yeah, I'd say that uh, James probably needed that that game as well as the one the previous week. He missed a fair bit of footy lately, and hopefully we'll get a better performance out of him <coughs> next week. He, I thought he was getting better as the game went on. I thought his last quarter was a, a beauty. You, you don't think uh, Gary's peaked too early? I mean, what happens <coughs> uh, next week if uh, you know it's uh, the, the the address needs to be given at half time? Is he peaked too early? Is he come in one week too early? Has he got anything left? Oh, he may well so have. Hey, he <laughs> oh, Sheets, Sheets, did the crow surprise? Don't worry, Kevin. Um, did Sam's relationship with common sense isn't that close. <laughs> Sheets, did the crow su surprise you in that first half? Because they were sensational. Yeah, they were great, and I think that um, you know, in all honesty, uh, I've never seen a club improved so much mm. like they have, mm. uh, only being in the competition for three years, years. Yeah. and really after their, I think it was eight goals to one point, Hawthorne game out at Waverley a couple of weeks ago, they've yeah. really changed around their first well, quarter and their first on, yeah. half, and they've um, done a lot of work in the psychology area with uh, Winter, one of their psychologists over there, and I mean I've got, I like to study clubs and see where they're coming from as well as the coach, and I think that, that that's been their best turnaround. And um, I would think that that's nearly got him into the grand final. She's Sam, the team that's I want to ask Sam this question. <laughs> Sam, I see Graham Corns is getting mad for the third time. It won't be long before he catches up to oh, you, mate, will it? <laughs> On oh. that note, uh, Sam, you can You've discuss been that in all the day thinking break. that question up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it's interesting, don't you? We want oh, you to go out with the little Taylor. Sam's the only bloke who's got an interchange bench in his bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, oh, Gary, Gary congratulations. Uh, yeah, good luck you. next week, no, Sheets. Congratulations <laughs> on the All-Australian coaching position too. And uh, just four quarters of footy to go.